All right, pre-flight's complete. Leg straps are on and checked. I feel good. The wind's light at about maybe eight knots, but blowing straight at the launch. It's carrying maybe a third of the weight of this wing for me. Settle myself on the edge, take a deep breath. It's time to fly. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I wanna share what I've been working on for the last couple of months. So let's start over. So I built an X-plane version of Raul Klingberg's new flying wing design. But before we go into that, I wanted to do a, a two minute breakdown of the design philosophy that, that I see here. A designer starts a project with a mission. You know, what mission do I want to design my aircraft to, to do? And the mission here is foot-launched cross-country soaring. If you start with that as your premise, then a lot of design decisions are, fall out from that. For example, choosing a flying wing configuration for foot launch offers several advantages. There's, there's no tail contact with the ground as you run down the hill, which can affect your, the angle of attack of your aircraft in a negative way that you don't want. Uh, the aircraft's empty weight is very close to the CG, makes it easy to pick up and run around with. Uh, there's no big CG shift as your weight begins to be carried by the wing. Uh, but there are some disadvantages. A, a flying wing uh, can have a propensity for a tip, stall, and spin. And in fact, Rawls' first wing suffered from that. Uh, and many elements of this design are aimed at, at preventing that. Specifically, in this case, the inboard elevons, they, notice they don't go all the way out to the tip. The unusual taper of the elevon, in which it increases in cord as you go out towards the tip. Uh, and the inboard position of the, of the vertical stabilizers uh, those were deliberate design decisions on Rawls' part, and he has a great series of videos explaining uh, how those all came to be. I uh, highly recommend you watch them. Uh, one of the other things with a swept flying wing like this is you can add flaps in the inboard section, you can see there. Uh, by putting them just on the inboard section, it sort of balances out the nose-down pitching moment the flaps normally would create by adding a nose-up pitching moment by only having them in the forward sections of the wing. Uh, so you can improve your low-speed performance and have a little bit of glide path control. So to sum up, because it's foot launched, uh, it, we're all went with a flying wing design. Because it's designed intentionally for good soaring performance, it's a fairly high aspect ratio, long wingspan uh, flying wing. There are a number of considerations aimed at reducing tip stall issues and to make it a good handling machine. And uh, lastly, it needs to be light enough that a a guy can pick it up and, and run with it. So, you know, you set a very strict weight budget of 100 pounds, which is, you know, a fair amount less than some of the other rigid wing hang gliders you see out there. So the design elements that you see here almost all revolve around the fact that it's foot launched. I want to look a little more at why make that choice. You know, what makes foot launched aircraft so interesting? Uh, it's definitely a niche. There's not very many people that do it. This is Otto Lilienthal. He was uh, one of the early pioneers of heavier-than-air uh, flying machines, and he was a proponent of foot launch for a number of reasons, but he experienced hundreds of uh, foot launch ground skimming flights. Octave Chanute also, you know, years before the Wright brothers were flying, was out flying essentially rigid wing hang gliders. Um, now, both of these guys were using weight shift for roll control, which isn't really that effective on a rigid aircraft. Um, the Wright brothers came along and added effective roll control, which was sort of a, a changing moment in aviation. But then they also added engines, and it quickly went from heavier than air to heavier than they could pick up. Uh, from that point on, people were more interested in payload, speed, and range than on just the fun of flying. Uh, and I'm not going to say the, the Wright brothers set back foot-launched aviation for decades, but it was a long time before we saw it reappear. After World War I, the Treaty of Versailles uh, prohibited Germany from developing powered aviation, once again taking away uh, goals of range and speed and payload. They became quite proficient at soaring, where measures of efficiency were things like lift-to-drag ratios and overall soaring performance. Here we see one of the Horton brothers flying his uh, 10A, I believe this one was. Um, it's a flying wing, foot launched, fairly lightweight, uh, rigid wing hang glider. Uh, but I think this guy, I don't really know who it is, um, is showing, I don't know, you can almost see the joy in his heart as he's running down the hill with this homemade uh, hang glider. And this, this actually, this kind of feeling is what 
reinvigorated uh, foot launched aircraft. Uh, it's it's the experience of of running and taking off like that 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 makes it so interesting. It's still very much a niche. Hang glider and paraglider pilots will tell you about the bird like flying experience it provides and how that's what compels them to do it. So I built a model of the Klingbird Mark II wing and was flying it around as a glider in X plane. Uh, you know, it had to be tow launched and it rolled on its wheels, and I just I didn't feel like that was doing what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to enjoy the foot launch experience uh, in X-Plane. And I wanted to be able to share that with some of you guys who don't fly. So I did a reset and spent several months learning how to write scripts and for X-Plane and Lua and use FMOD to make sounds and uh, figure out ways to trick, if you will, X-Plane into thinking I had legs and standing down and or setting the wing down, picking the wing up, running with it, picking my feet up afterwards. Um, you know, those aren't things you find in Plane Maker. And so now I'm going to show you where this project is. I'm not quite complete with it. I'm, I'm not a professional developer, and these things take me a little bit longer than it might take somebody who really knows what they're doing. Um, but let me show you what I have. We're going to go to Crestline, which is a, a, a really nice launch site in the San Bernardino Mountains. Um, you can, there's also a, a lower altitude hill called Marshall Peak. Um, I'll try and do a top landing there to show off some things you can't do with other aircraft, and then I'll go down and land at Andy Jackson Sky Park. As we fly back by the launch, you can see that one of the cheats I had to do in order to be able to launch from uh, from Hill. Uh, that's a five meter by five meter helipad with a uh, with a windsock that I created using the World Editor. Uh, I didn't put any real work into modeling any details; just told it I wanted it there and put up a windsock. All right, I'm going to fly around for a while and I'll uh, check back in when I get close to top landing on Marshall. So top landing can be one of the more dangerous parts of the flight for these foot launch wings. Uh, you know, you're, you're landing in a place with the basically thermal triggers, uh, there's turbulence and you're close to the ground. So it's a bit exciting and, and fairly often the place you're trying to land on is quite small. This is very much like a carrier landing only something that you and I can experience. Um, so there's plenty of times you'll end up boltering and overflying your landing and just fly back off into the lift and climb back up and try it again. I cut one of those out already. I'm just going to show you an actual top landing. So now's a good time to get out and go to the bathroom, maybe eat a sandwich. But I'm just going to press right on and walk up to the edge. Let's get another one of those foot lunches in.
Alright, I'm gonna fly around some more and I'll check back in just before landing. All right, I'm coming into Andy Jackson Air Park. It's in Southern California, the base of the San Bernardino Mountains. Uh, it normally doesn't have trees on it. It's something that X-Plane decided it might be a good idea to put in the landing zone. But, um, well, why don't we just watch? So there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. Now, as far as availability goes, I do plan to put this model up on xplane.org at some point, uh, but for right now I've given permission to Raul Klingberg to share it with his Patreons to help encourage people to support the development of this uh, flying rigid wing hang glider. And I hope you do. I hope you go check out his channel. I'll, I'll put a link to it down in the words below. But I think after Rawls' first flight, or Christmas of this year, whichever comes first, I'll put this up on nextplane.org so everyone can enjoy it. I do plan to make a couple of more videos just showing some of the features of this model, uh, and some of the characteristics of it, how it flies. Um, maybe a little something on using XC SOAR for a cross-country flight, since this is a cross-country machine. And uh, I hope you uh, tune in and watch those. In the meantime, this is Peter Hudson signing off.